Welcome to the series, Are the Indian Mounds in North America Really the Remnant of the Nephilim? In this series, my husband and I are investigating that question. In the era of disinformation and misinformation that we are currently living in, we feel it is of importance that we look and question our history more closely. We are learning that our history hasn't always been truthful as to what has actually happened. Greed and agendas of certain people have influenced what we as the public have been informed about our history. Join us in our investigation and let's take a closer look. My husband and I are followers of Jesus, so everything we look at, we try to look at with a biblical reference, especially relating to our history. Does the Bible reference the Nephilim? Yes. In Genesis 6, verses 1 through 6, the Bible specifically mentions the Nephilim. They are the children of the sons of God that mated with human women. According to the website Knowing Scripture, written by Zachary Garris, I quote, However, the traditional view of both pre-Christian Judaism and the early church was that the sons of God were spirit beings or angels who took human wives and produced giants known as the Nephilim. This view has become less popular today, probably due to our modern aversion to the supernatural. This passage leads into the story of the flood as God saw that the wickedness of man was great and that the earth was filled with violence. God therefore decided to send a flood to wipe out humanity. But why were men all of a sudden so violent? Was it because the godly line mixed with the ungodly line? Or was it at least in part because humanity had mixed with spirit beings? Mr. Garris goes on to make seven important points in support of the traditional view that the sons of God were spirit beings who mated with human women and produced the Nephilim. Number one, the phrase sons of God elsewhere in the Old Testament refers to spirit beings, angels. Two, Genesis 6, 1 through 2, contrasts the sons of God with man, implying that these are non-human beings. Three, the view that the sons of God refers to the godly line requires the unlikely explanation that ungodly women were far more attractive than the godly women. 4. Immediately following the reference to the inner marriage, God says he will judge man because he is of flesh, implying that humans were trying to become more than normal flesh by marrying spirit beings. 5. The context implies that the Nephilim were the result or the resulting offspring of spirit beings and humans. 6. Jude likely understands Genesis 6 to refer to the intermarriage between spirit beings and humans. 7. The Bible never rules out the sexual capabilities of spirit beings and angels or war angels. The scripture tells us 1. The Nephilim were on earth before and after the flood. 2. God flooded the earth to remove the evil the fallen angels taught mankind and their offspring. And 3. The latter days of mankind would be just like in the days of Noah. After I read the book of Enoch, I have a much better understanding of why they wanted to remove this book from the Bible. To control the masses of people, in my opinion, for their own evil purposes. Ethiopia is the only place where the book of Enoch is still canonized in the Bible. However, the Bible still referred to the Nephilim, Enoch, as well as the fallen angels, Canaanites, Anunnaki, and the giant Goliath that David fought. A lot of mentions with regards to giants, don't you think? Not a coincidence and definitely worth researching more. Let's look at the Native Americans and their depictions of giants. I think we will find that there are more similarities than differences between the biblical accounts and the Native American folklores. The Indian mounds bring together not only stories, folklores, legends, and myths, but actual evidence of a time when giants roamed the earth. As we go through this series, we'll look at Native American folklore on the giants, name of Native American giants from various tribes, 
as well as some Native American giant stories. There are also recommended books about giants in Native American mythology. But some of the characteristics and belief about Native American giants, they practice cannibalism, their height ranges from 10 to 60 feet tall, they prey on children, humans can transform into one of them either by possession of an evil spirit or committing evil deeds, they can be male or female, some are sea monsters, live in various terrains throughout the valleys in America. Some are skinners. They skin their victims alive. Some are associated with Bigfoot. Some can only be destroyed by destroying their talismans. Some are associated with ice and winter. Some are portrayed as the boogeyman, man-eaters with superhuman qualities. As part man, part animal, part serpent. As predators of humankind as malevolent, mean, ogre-filled, with hatred and greedy, with having magical powers, as being made of stone, and if you look at them, they can paralyze you. Personally, the Native American descriptions of these giants are very similar to the Book of Enoch, not only of the giants, but of the fallen angels, too. Coincidence? We are presenting this series not only as just research, but with an expedition to some of the actual Indian mounds in the lower Mississippi River Valley to see if they too fit the description and have any similarities to other mounds. We will be filming the mounds, taking photos where permitted of the archaeological findings and asking questions to present you with what we find. We will be asking some of the same questions Mr. Marzulli presents in his On the Trail of the Nephilim series of the Mound Builders because we believe he is onto something with his findings. He has over 30 years experience. He seems more accurate than not on his description of the Nephilim and he has traveled all over the earth researching clues to many archaeological sites in reference not only to the Nephilim but the fallen angels themselves. Our first destination will be Natchez, Mississippi. There are two points of interest we will be looking at, Grand Village of the Natchez Indians and Emerald Mound. Emerald Mound is one of the largest mounds in North America. It covers eight acres. Grand Village was once the capital of the Natchez Indians during the late 17th and early 18th centuries. We will begin this adventure in August of 2019. The exact date is to be determined. We will release a video in July updating you with the video premiere date for August. Hope you can join us and we're looking forward to it.